Okay, let's take a look at the last section before our exam number three. This is on statically indeterminate beams. And for, uh, for this, what we're talking about is we have too many uh, unknowns, usually reactions, then we have equations. So if I look at this beam right here, I have a pin connection on one side, a roller on the other. If I were to draw my, um, my reactions, I could have a single reaction up at B. I could have two at A, so I have uh, three unknowns total, and I have three equations. So this one is statically determinant. This is not what we're talking about. This is what we've been doing up until now. And in fact, if I wanted to know what the load is, it is symmetric. So I know that the total load down is the 5 kilonewtons per meter times 10 or uh, 50. I could just divide that by 2 and say that this side's 25 kilonewtons and the other side is handling the other 25 kilonewtons. Of course, some of the forces in the x equals 0, so ax is 0. Um, but the question would be, what if I took that exact same scenario and the only thing I did was replace the reaction at A with a fixed support. Now if I look at how many unknowns I have, I would have the same BY, AY, and AX. The only difference is because it's a rigid support, I could also have a moment at A. So I have four unknowns and I have three equations and we call this statically indeterminate to the first degree or we could say we have one redundancy, one extra reaction that we actually don't need to be there. Now you do need to be careful with something like this because this is a, a common place for error is someone might see this beam and say well how is the loading any different than the beam above? The beam above has a 5 kilonewton per meter load over the 10 meters, so I have a total of 50, and it's half the loads towards B, half the loads towards A, so I just put half on each. Would it be okay to do the same thing here? Could I take the same 50 kilonewton total load and say, well, half of it's on the right-hand side, so I'm going to put it on B, and half's on the left-hand side, I'm going to put it on A? And the answer is no, you can no longer do that. Because it's statically indeterminate, um, it changes. Uh, it maybe take a second. Like, which do you think would handle more uh, more force, the reaction at A or the reaction at B? Because they are no longer the same. It is no longer symmetric. Um, and by the way, the reason it's not symmetric, or what's changing here, is is the fact that this uh, on the side can't rotate anymore. So my theta, if I think about a deflected shape, it has to come straight out and up. Versus up here, we have a deflected shape that could rotate around and just make a big smiley face, right? So what causes that is a moment, and in that moment, it would, would make it so there's, in essence, zero rotation on that end. Um, so regardless, uh, we do need a method to solve this. There are several methods to solve stackly indeterminate problems. You could do it by uh, the integration method, uh, double integration method. You could do a uh, moment area method. Um, there's a moment distribution method, and uh, but what we're going to be looking at is similar to what we have done for statically determinate problems with torsion and with axial stresses. We're going to be looking at superposition. And so let's go ahead and map out in general terms, instead of using that specific problem, the same type of loading scenario, meaning I'm going to have a cantilevered beam uh, and it's going to have an extra support on one end and we'll put a distributed load over here so just like the example we we're looking at in this case what we're going to do is use variables instead we'll call this W for the load we still have A and B and I have a, my reactions BY and at A I have an AY AX in a moment at A and we'll say this whole thing has a length of L so just like we've we've done in the past with superposition, the first step is to remove a redundancy. And in this case, I would say the redundancy I'm going to remove is that roller over there at B, or my reaction BY. And we're going to replace that redundancy with a force using superposition. So in essence, what I have is I'm going to break it apart like we've done before. I have my beam. Uh, can't leave it out without the reaction at B, but still with this distributed load on here. And if I applied that load, I could imagine what the deflected shape would look like. Something like that. And I'm going to call this 
lowercase v sub 1 for the deflection at the end of the beam. And I'm going to add to that the deflection from the force on the end of the beam, which we call by, and I have a new deflected shape. So at the end of the beam, I'll call that V2. Now, after I have um, that first part done, I want to apply my compatibility condition. And from compatibility, what I'm doing is I'm saying, well, what do I know about the deflection at point B? Well, because point B is a solid surface here on that roller, it can't go anywhere. So I know that, uh, that my total deflection at B must be equal to zero. So from that, I can say my deflection from the first load scenario plus my deflection from the second must be equal to zero. So taking a look at the equations for deflection, uh, what I have is the deflection from a distributed load. You know, we're looking at this case right here, and we want to know the deflection right at the very end, which is the maximum deflection. So we can use that minus WL uh, to the fourth over 8EI. Now for the other one, let's go ahead and just look at both as long as we're here. What we have is a point load at the very end of the beam. And once again, our deflection is the maximum. So we can use the PL cubed over 3EI. The only thing I'd say is we're not going to have a negative because our force, of course, is pointing up. So that's where I find my equations for those two deflections. And plugging that in for my deflection 1 and 2, I get something that looks like that. And from here, I can solve for... Uh, by my reaction at the end. Now in the real world I wouldn't have these in variable form. I'd have actual numbers so maybe it would look a little less threatening. End up with 3wl over 8. Notice the e and i's don't factor into this because um, we can multiply through by ei and have those go away. Uh, so by the way for our example up top if I were to plug this in I would end up with 18.75 kilonewtons. So, of course, uh, what we said, if it was symmetric, we would have 25. So it is less, and hopefully you, you got that. The reason it would be less, by the way, is if this moment is actually there, you can imagine that moment twisting this beam and taking some of the load off of B. That's why B takes less, and of course, A would take the rest. So that is our third step in this process. We are going to use the equilibrium equations for our other reactions. So in this case, what I would do is I would start with some of the forces in the y direction equals zero and you know once again now I know this this by 3 wl over 8 and I can see a y would have to handle the remainder of the total load which would be wl so from that I'd end up with a y as 5 wl over 8 because I need 8 over 8 wl right over 1 wl or something uh, and then the other one that I would need are is is the moment reaction. So some of the moments about a equals zero. If you did this, you'd find the moment at a is equal to w l squared over eight. So that gives us our three reactions uh, for a, b, and a moment. But let's go ahead and look at an actual example. Um, actually, before I do that. Uh, up here at part A, or part 1, where I said let's remove a redundancy, the roller at B, as an alternative, I could have removed a different redundancy, and I could have removed that moment at point A. So in that case, I'm starting off with a beam, and now if I remove that moment, I'm back to a simply supported beam, meaning it's pinned on one side and a roller on the other. Um, and what we're actually looking at here is our rotation, our theta. And I would call that theta 1 because I already know that when I add on the moment, my redundancy, in this case my redundancy, is a concentrated moment at A, looks like that. Then my deflected shape, of course, would be, you know, make it up like that there. And I didn't draw my deflected shape here. I don't know if I really needed to, something like that. Um, and then I would have a theta 2. Now I know because it is a fixed connection that there can be no rotation at point A. So for my redundancy I would have, or for my compatibility I'd have the theta from the first loading condition plus the theta from the second loading condition must be equal to zero. 
and I could solve for the moment and then use those compatibility or those um, equilibrium equations after that. So let's go ahead and squeeze in one more example. I think there's time to do that. For this example, what I'm going to have is simply supported beam, not simply supported, a beam that has a pinned connection on one side, a roller on the other, and another roller right at the midpoint. And we'll put a evenly distributed load on this beam. And we'll say this load is equal to two kilonewtons per meter of length. And we have, this is a two span beam. Each span is 10 meters long. So we can talk about these supports. We'll say we have A, B, and C. And an important thing is that our EI is constant. That allows us to multiply through and have things disappear near the end. So um, the first thing that I think about on a problem like this is I know I'm going to be removing a redundancy. And then I have to say, well, which redundancy would I want to remove? Uh, and I would want to remove either B or C. But the problem with removing C is I don't have any deflection equations. There we go. I don't have any uh, deflection equations that have a loading scenario where I have something pinned in a roller in an overhang, right? Um, but I do have some where I have pinned in roller uh, and a distributed load throughout. So that's that's actually what I'm thinking ahead on which one I'd remove. I'd remove B for this case. So what I have is a simply supported beam after I move that remove that center support with a distributed load throughout the entire thing. And this would give me a deflected shape, clearly exaggerated, something like that. And I'm going to add to that my redundancy, which is my roller in the center. And we're going to add that as a point load. Now remember, don't put your distributed load on this one as well. So, And what do we care about and what do we know? Uh, we know that the overall deflection right here at B when I add these two together, must be equal to zero. So I could call this V1, this V2, and from our compatibility, I know that V1 plus V2 must be equal to zero. And so I get those from our table, and I see that um, that the first one, I, I'm going to look at the distributed load throughout the entire thing, and I am at the midpoint, which is where V max would occur. So I can use this max. I don't have to use the elastic curve on that one. Uh, and while we're here, let's look at the point load. Point load is right in the center, so we're using this guy here. And once again, I can look at V max. So plugging those two in for my deflections, I end up with something like this. That's just the equations. Now I'm going to put in my actual numbers. So the W that we had was 2 kilonewtons per meter. The length is 20 meters because it's the entire length to the fourth power over 384 EI. BY is my unknown. That's my P value in the equation. Length being 20 again. And now this is cubed over 48. EI yeah, and the whole thing must be equal to zero. So because that's zero, my EIs go away and I can solve for my only unknown BY and end up with BY is 25 kilonewtons. And if I wanted to know, I didn't even say what I wanted to find here, but if I wanted to find the other reactions from there, I could just use some of the forces in the Y direction. Um, actually, in this case, it is symmetric, so it'd be pretty easy. I just take the total load which is what, two kilonewtons times uh, 20 is 40, and I'd have 40 minus 25 divided by two. That would be what my reactions are, A and C. So hopefully you found that somewhat interesting, and I will talk to you all later. Thanks.